Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm Drew. We're back with another review for Let's Table It. Today, we're talking about quiltable paper quilts. This is designed by Jared Richardson. And published by Circle J Games. So, in a quiltable paper quilts, you are rolling dice and marking off on your personal player sheet different patterns in this section. You can transfer them to this section to score, and you can use your combinations of dice to mark off scoring conditions for the end game. What did we like about it? You know, you approach it as just being this simple roll, write, you know, like so many others. But there's a little more strategy involved to this and how you lay things out and what you choose for your patterns. Yes, for sure. I think you have to pay a lot of attention to what you are choosing for your scoring conditions and make sure those things are all going to work together instead of choosing disparate ones that are going to score you a couple points here, a couple points there. If you can get some of those to synergize, it's going to score you yeah, a lot. Yeah, those combos are huge. Like I said, if, if you can get the rolls to come up mm -hmm. right. I mean, there's definitely, as with any roll and write, there's a luck component to it. So sure. that's part of it. But yeah, you, you can still mitigate some of that if you have a few patterns that really correlate together. Yes, and there are some ways to manipulate your dice if you get certain columns and rows filled out. I think the columns help you mitigate the dice rolls and then the rows help you get some more patterns, mm -hmm. pattern, um, to, to scoring conditions. Yeah, even a wild uh, yes. star and stuff like that. Yes, and that helps a lot too. Um, I really enjoyed the thinkiness of trying to get the right things in the right area. And we noticed that if you chose scoring conditions that weren't so locked into specific items on there, you chose the more generic A, B, C patterns that you were gonna have a lot more freedom in order to score the most points. Yeah. And I really liked that thinkiness of, if I can get this here and this here and this here, and then I can continue that over here, that's really gonna score me a lot of points. Yeah, and again, it's one of those, make sure you've got the A, B, A, or whatever pattern, and then have that correlate to one of the others that is set a certain way. Yes. You know, set with certain symbols and things like that, so. Definitely. Some negatives, for me, I thought the rules were just a little bit tricky to understand. I had to hand it to Drew and be like, I am not grasping this. I'm not understanding. There were a couple of little amb ambiguities in that rule set that um, I just had a hard time with. And I think on some level, I feel like, is it necessary to have a pattern area and then a place to move those to your final quilt? I'm just wondering if that's just an extra step. You know, I can see that, but at the same time, I think it does add another layer to it because um, I kind of like that. I like that it wasn't set in stone and I could change some things around if I needed to or just to make something work a little bit better. So you, you had, again, and I think it's another way to mitigate the dice rolls by being able to put it in the pattern area. It doesn't have to be part of this set in stone pattern but maybe i can grab that later and slide it in at the end so that you can't finish yours sure you know or something like that so i think while uh you know it might not seem like quite what you want but i definitely thought that was a a nice move see and i think my brain just works in concrete and so when i have it the way i want it i'm just going to leave it that way and i'm not going to put it down if i don't want it that way and so i personally didn't really move when i was moving things from my pattern area into my actual quilt I never rotated anything. I never switched anything around. I just moved it straight down. And so I think that might just be how my brain works. Yeah, but like I said, I, I definitely can see it coming in towards the end where you might want, again, to, to get you know two in there, right there towards the end, keep you from filling yours out, or just to ensure that you've got that pattern that's gonna score you. Yeah, it's only gonna score you two here but it's going to score you three there so at least at the end you can grab five more points or something like that sure. so other than that i really enjoyed our play of paper quilts it had a surprising amount of strategy to it um 
I am by no means an artist, but I did enjoy coming up with my own symbols and a little bit of freedom there, even though I always feel inferior because Drew's are a lot better than mine. Mine look like mm. a five-year-old did them. No, and, and that's, that's like the one thing I wasn't sure about, like, uh, not as big into drawing, mm-hmm. you know, feeling like that. But it definitely had some of those aspects of... Um, AP even to a roll and write, which mm-hmm. was, it was nice and a lot crunchier than I expected. So that was kind of fun. For sure. This has been a review for Quiltable Paper Quilts. For more board gaming content, please make sure you're subscribed to Let's Table It. If you would like to follow our family's day-to-day gaming adventures, make sure you are following us on Instagram at Sarah Always Loses. Thanks for watching.